This is the story of The Wayward Knight, a dark tale of corruption and nepotism taking place in Chaden Hall during the events of Oblivion. When approaching the eastern city of Chaden Hall post completing the Dagon Shrine quest, the guard at the gate warns prior to our entry. Morning, sir. Count Inderis has ordered us to hold our positions until Fairwill returns from inside that accursed Oblivion Gate. What? An Oblivion Gate here? Where did that come from? I don't know where it came from, but a mysterious gate appeared outside the walls of our city. The way the guards are reacting, it must be a threat. They're massing as if bracing for an attack. The portal is just outside the city walls, through the west gates if you want to see for yourself. Be careful. Some say the gate leads to the realm of oblivion itself. This begins the quest, The Wayward Knight. Good day. Before we make our way towards the hostile Daedric portal we see ominously peering out over the hill, we instead make our way to Castle Chadenhall and speak to the Count in which he says, I don't have time to chat right now. With that oblivion gate looming outside the city walls, we're bracing for an attack. Perhaps we can speak later. I understand the urgency. I actually saw the Oblivion Gate outside the walls. Perhaps I can help with the situation if you could tell me a bit more about the gate. Not long ago, one of those foul gates manifested itself just outside the west gates of our city. Nothing's come out of it yet, but we fear the worst. My son, Farwell, has taken some knights and entered the gate bravely in hopes of meeting the enemy head-on. If you want to help, and we can use all the help we can get. Head over to the gate and lend a hand to the guards. So we're going to be looking for, was it Farwell and his knights, he said? I can only hope that Farwell and his knights manage to close that oblivion gate. The fate of Chadenhall hangs in the balance. Although understandably shaken due to his son's current situation, we ask the Count about his own humanitarian efforts during this crisis, and he humbly proclaims, It is not always an easy life we lead. But the people must be served. That was a right pretty speech from Atobi's throne. Before we leave, Count Indra shares some parting wisdom, saying, Please, although I'm concerned about the safe return of my son and the closing of the gate, please see Aminus Gregory for all of the details. With a possible attack looming, I must be free to make preparations. Good luck! Exiting the throne room, we learn the gate has understandably got some of the townsfolk in a dither, yet they still seem to believe in the Count's son Farwell's abilities, commenting. How are you today? Everyone is waiting to see if Farwell and his knights return from inside that dreadful oblivion gate. Such brave lads. Goodbye. A quest then updates reading, Count Indorus of Chadenhall has mentioned the opening of what they suspect to be a gate to the realm of oblivion just outside the city walls. The guards seem on alert and tensions appear to be running high. He said if I wanted to help, I should make my way through the west gates of Chadenhall and speak to the guards there. Exiting the city gate, we indeed see the sky turns a familiar red laced with ash raining down. And just behind the stables to the northwest, a large oblivion gate looms close to the city walls. As we approach the threatening crimson portal, our quest then updates reading, I've come upon an oblivion gate dominating the landscape outside the walls of Chadenhall. A few Chadenhall guards seem to be patrolling its perimeter. I should approach one of them and see if I can render any assistance. As we make our way to the portal, the leader of the four guards, Aminus, then intercepts us, warning. I'd advise you to keep your distance from that accursed portal. We then inquire, where did this Oblivion Gate come from? Haven't you heard about these gates to Oblivion opening up all over Tamriel? Obviously, you have to have dealt with the, at least the gate in Kavach prior to this quest, but we can still try and glean more information from Aminus and say, no. Please tell me about them. To which he will fumble. Well, not much to say, really. These gates to other places, um, well, it, it's very hard to explain. I'm, I'm not sure I even understand it. I hear tell that the Daedra make their way through these and invade our lands. It's sort of a door to the world where they live. Haven't seen it myself and don't intend to. Being this close to one makes me nervous. The good news is nothing's come out since Farwell entered. Although Aminus' explanation is somewhat crude, he is indeed correct. 
We then promptly inquire about the Count's son, asking, How long has Farwell been inside the gate? About two days ago, Count Indaris' son, Farwell, entered the Oblivion Gate with six other men. We haven't heard from them since then. The Count fears the worst, and has posted guards here so we can watch and see if anyone comes back out. And so far, nothing. At this point, Count Indaris is offering a reward for the recovery of his son from inside the gate, or confirmed news of his demise. If you find him, or the rest of the Knights of the Thorn, get them out of there. I'm sure the Count would also be pleased if the gate was closed. So the Count offering a separate reward for news of Farwell's demise, a possibility the Count didn't openly entertain during our introduction and understandably so. We then query from the guard the efficacy of these so-called Knights of the Thorn we keep hearing about, to which he responds. New to these parts, eh? The Knights of the Thorn are a bunch of rabble who fancy themselves true knights. Farwheel formed the group around two years ago. They make grand boasts and talk a good talk, but that's all they are. The real work goes to us, the city guard. I hate to speak ill of them, as something horrible may have happened, but their own bravado got them into this mess. We'd actually heard from some other folks that they were pretty brave. If they're just a bunch of louts, why is this behavior tolerated by the Count? It's tolerated because Farwheel is the Count's son, plain and simple. He has the power and the coin to put it all together. Most of the time, they lounge around the tavern drinking and making up stories of epic battles with impossible odds that they won. It's all garbage. They never patrol. They never help fight off the occasional bandit that slips into the city. Ah, oh, well, I've said too much already. So it seems Farwell and these Knights of the Thorn are really thorns in the side of the actual city guards. Regardless, if we're going to get Farwell out, we have to know, is there anything special about this gate? There's only one way to remove that gate. Venture inside, find the gate sigil stone, and take it. Once you have it, the gate should be closed. From what I hear, you'll appear back where you entered, safe and sound. That makes sense. That's what actually happened to us in Kavach. It's a pretty bizarre experience. Tell me, is it at all possible for you and your guards to aid us in retrieving Farwell from the clutches of Oblivion? We will remain out here until the gate is either closed or something emerges from inside. We need to warn Chadenhall of impending attacks. Well, that was a polite no if we've ever heard one. How come Indorus doesn't put his son first? Are you saying... Indorus has given you orders not to retrieve his son? Count Indorus has ordered us to hold our positions until Fairwill returns from inside that accursed Oblivion Gate. Well, we can only imagine how dire the situation is if the Count has put his city before his own kin. Well, if we're going in alone, we need to know what Farwell looks like. Farwell is a Dunmer, and he's wearing steel plate armor. His shield should bear the crest of the knights. Nothing but the best for the Count's son. Well, that description was dripping with contempt, but understandably so if you are the one doing all the heavy lifting and don't even get the steel armor that the knights are afforded. Speaking of which, how many Knights of the Thorn are there in total? There are seven of them, including Farwell. Even though they're a nuisance, I still hope they haven't been hurt. Or worse. Tread carefully. I don't know what evil lurks within that gate. Before entering the sinister gate, we somewhat wisely about face and then make our way to the northeast and enter a small gated estate. Once inside, we see a house of typical Dunma architecture and an overgrown entrance. Adjacent to the door are two banners displaying the Knights of the Thorn crest, which involves a steel blade and a single thorn that wraps around said blade as if it were a snake. Inside the hall, we find Jared Strongblade, the remaining member who greets. The whole town is on edge with that oblivion gate open just outside the walls. Asking for Jared's aid in rescuing his fellow comrades, he simply replies. If the guards don't do something about the oblivion gate soon, I'm leaving town. It's not safe here. Farewell. 
Jared himself actually breaks and sometimes disappears from the quest, hence why I had to spawn him in and his dialogue is not complete. Also, we will be exploring the Knights of the Thorn Lodge as we return to it, so for now, we speak to the city guard a final time before commencing our quest. Please speak to Aminus. Speaking to Aminus as directed, he shares some final musings of the perils ahead. You're a brave soul to attempt entry to oblivion. Hopefully your skill matches your fortitude. Tread carefully. I don't know what evil lurks within that gate. With that final grim warning to conclude our interaction, we find the guards have put down a single flame Atronach outside the gate's mouth. Drawing our sword, we enter the Moor of Oblivion. Once inside the hellish landscape, our quest and updates reading, I've stepped through the Oblivion Gate outside of Chaden Hall, and now find myself in the dreaded plain of Oblivion itself. My only chance to destroy the gate and return home would be obtaining the Sigil Stone in this plain citadel. I should make my way there now. Lightning crackles above, and the air emanates a foreboding energy. It's only a few steps from the portal we find a morbid welcome. Two Dunmas heads casually staked on a spike. We can also collect the local alien fauna, being blood grass, and the wicked Harada root, <coughs> which defensively reacts to any unwanted interlopers with its long, barky tendrils. In between the severed heads, we find the first of the fallen Knights of the Thorn, a Dunma that doesn't appear to be Farwell, at least we don't believe, as he doesn't bear any of the sigil on his outfit. Or perhaps it was taken from him. Standing atop the slaughtered corpse of the knight's brethren, we do something quite macabre. Remembering Aminus's disdain for the knight's superior armor, we equip ourselves with full plate of steel, hopefully to better protect ourselves from the perils ahead. The rocks, as if hearing our thoughts, begin to crumble around us, warning the Daedra of our trespassing, or perhaps just a natural occurrence in Mehrun Dagon's realm of destruction and change. To the southwest, just below us, we see the first sentry, a bipedal Daedra known as a clan fear, local to Dagon's realm. To its credit, the dinosaur-like Daedra sensed us, but too late. We can also collect some of the spittle sticks, as the local flora that are found in the Badlands are brilliant really for anything alchemical, as they are quite rare in the game of Oblivion, but... Seeing as we're focusing on the quest at hand, I'm not going to announce every time I see another plant or root or tree or piece of flora or fauna as people are hopefully familiar at this point, being what, nearly 20 years on from the original's release. Speaking of ubiquitous Daedra, we see a single scamp over the hill. I also want to take a moment to note that my character has had his stats enhanced and the game difficulty is lowered, hence why the Daedra will fall sometimes with one or two hits, because cinematically it's not really sexy to watch you swing your sword or to unleash 57 arrows into a single enemy, it just doesn't play well and it becomes really repetitive quickly. So if you have a question, the answer is I'm trying to make it look as cinematic as humanly possible. Heading up the western track, we find our ourselves at a door that is marked with the Oblivion symbol, and we enter the aptly named Bowels. Once inside, we hear what appears to be a single scream, and we equip our short sword, but do not see an enemy on this level. Free to explore the cavern, we then search the fleshy pods which have low-level potions and some gold. As the gates to Oblivion do hold a lot of leveled random items, I don't think it's really worth us going through each individual item as it's going to change every playthrough. Instead, we hop down a level, ha! mistiming our leap into one of the Harada's flicks, and see a single lame Atronaut that we relieve of life, thanks to a single concussive blast of lightning magicka. In between the Harada's flicks, we hear the screams of a scamp below, and see that he is guarding a corpse of one of the Knights of Thorn. Dispatching said scamp, we then search his body for his skin and a lockpick, and then see another fallen knight, this time looted of his armor save for his boots and sword. With fresh blood under the Harada, we cannot help but wonder, was it his blood or the scamp's? Hence the screams. Apparently, Harada doesn't discriminate. 
post descending to the bottom of the mountain and a second barrow which was very much like the one we first explored hence why we've moved forward we find at the bottom we're again outside in the open air and our quest updates reading i've located farwell and one other survivor of his group they look wounded and shaken i should speak to them to learn what's happened here ah uh, it's about time someone got here what took you so long Choosing to ignore Farwell's petulant remarks, we ask him on the more pressing question. Where are the rest of your comrades in this accursed gate? I set out with the rest of the knights to dispatch this blemish on the face of our fine world. When we arrived, we were overwhelmed. I myself was able to kill perhaps two score of them, but they just kept coming. Only Bremen and I remain alive. However, with you here now, we can take the sigil stone from that citadel and complete our quest for the good of all Chadenhall. Huzzah! Ignoring most of Farwell's fabrications and agreeing that the sigil should be our priority, we then tell him, Farwell, you're in no shape to fight. We need to get you out of here. Are you mad? A Knight of the Thorn never returns home until the mission is done. It's our way. Now, in my father's name as Count Indorus of Chadenhall, I order you to lead me to that sigil stone. I suggest we use the Raymond Sweep formation. You'll assault and we'll guard the rear flank. Onward and upward! Huzzah! Well, that, uh, that huzzah battle cry is already wearing. Th we can then reiterate to Farwell, we believe it's safer if we attempt to retrieve the sigil stone ourselves, but he simply parrots back. The sigil stone for this oblivion gate is the key. As soon as we have it, we shall rid Chadenhall of its existence. Realizing that Farwell has already sank back into his delusion of grandeur, we then attempt to appeal to his responsibilities as a leader, saying, You should really think of your fellow Knight Bremen, he's wounded. We are knights sworn to uphold the laws of Chadenhall. We fear no being, and we strike fast and true as lightning. Many wish to join our ranks, as we are of the highest echelon. Only a select few may join the finest force ever to grace the lands of Cyrodiil. Until now, we numbered only seven, but attacked like a regiment. Our enemies quake at our approach and falter at our charge. Huzzah! The path is yours. Lead on. And literally didn't hear a word we said, with his parting words being, Lead on. To victory for the Knights of the Thorn. Oh, and you too, of course. Turning to Farwell's only surviving brother-in-arms, Bremen, he instead greets us with some modicum of gratitude and appraises. Even if Farwell doesn't say it, we appreciate that you're here. Already we can tell that Bremen is far too injured to play along with Farwell's fantasies and instead ask directly, what happened during your assault of the Oblivion Gate? I'm sure you wish to hear the real story, rather than Farwell's version. Not long after the gate opened, Farwell decided an assault was in order. We charged inside and promptly met resistance. Three of us were cut down in the first wave. We pressed on at Farwell's behest. At the base of the citadel, we met a larger second wave of foes. We lost two more in that skirmish, as well as Farwell and I being wounded badly. It was at this point we considered retreat. We found the way back blocked by more Daedra, so we were stuck here until... Rescued by you. It's just like Farwell to leap before he looks. Had we brought a City Watch contingent, we might have taken the Sigil Stone with minimal losses. Instead, Farwell wanted to prove his point. The City Watch and the Knights of the Thorn are always at odds. They think we don't have what it takes, and Farwell wanted to show them. Perhaps we're all to blame. But that's not important right now. We must complete our journey and get that stone. Please, help us. Thanks to Bremen's sincere recounting of the knight's doomed assault in the Oblivion Gate, the picture becomes much clearer. And although we do appreciate his honesty, we can't help but think Farwell will still be a thorn in our side and ask, what do you suggest we do about Farwell? Don't judge Farwell too harshly. Most of what he says is fabricated, but he's young and therefore quite brash and inexperienced. All he wants to do is please his father. I've known him since he was a lad, and fighting to defend Chaden Hall is in his heart. I just wish his heart 
was bigger than his hubris. Bremen then wisely concludes, Let's keep moving. After meeting Farwell and his companion Bremen at the base of the caves, we pause to reflect on the fact that with high enough acrobatics ability, one could simply have hopped down instead of traversing the dangerous caves. It should also be noted of the Plain of Oblivion, instead of heading to the sigil keep that lay across the bridge, we can search the plain itself following the path hugging the side of the cliff face. <laughs> However, this takes us back to where we met Farwell if we head all the way around looping us in a giant circle. Furthermore, both Knights of the Thorn can die fairly easily, so it's not advised to take your chances between the roaming Daedra, the mines underfoot, or spinning sentries that are known to shoot scorching spheres of slaughter. However, for those of you that are inclined to explore, there is a minor keep on the northwestern shore that does house a Daedra who guards leveled chests in the form of fleshy buckets, which holds some pretty decent leveled loot if you're willing to take the trip. Back where we first met the knights, just at the base of the mountain, we find a slain scamp draped across a fallen stone pillar, a remnant of a recent battle but also we see another Dunmer's head impaled on a spike as a warning for those foolish enough to enter the sigil keep. Lobbing arrows directly down the bridge, our target is a flame Atronok, and as our first arrow meets its mark, it mistakenly sprints towards us to its own peril. Before we continue to cross the bridge, we take inventory of the scene, finding another fallen member of the Knights of Thorn slain, his body outstretched next to a fallen scamp, and it appears that both of them died a horrific death, and we soon find a much larger threat. Behind the massive keep's gates, a minor contingent of Daedra patrol, as the knights both rush in haphazardly to combat. <laughs> After the first successful assault, despite our own fumble, we hear that the Daedra below finally succumbs to the lava, proving the old adage, everything burns. With the knights safely at our rear, we then loot the flame Atronok and look upon the gargantuan tower, realizing that the fallen knights may have done some good as the gates have been open and allowed us to pass. However, before we can enter the large doors, we find a final Daedra awaiting our arrival. Bow to me! This ends here! Yeah. Ah. This ends yeah. here! On the Dramora Kinreeve's body, we find a bow and some of their famous biting arrows, as well as a Daedra heart and gold nugget. Once we've equipped their superior bow, we then push open the large double doors of the sigil and cautiously step inside. Before we can even draw our bow, the knights let out a battle cry, rushing the closest flame astronaut and abandoning any semblance of battle tactic in the process. I've fought mud crabs more fearsome than you! Luckily, we get the drop in an unsuspecting Dramora and both of the knights rush in to finish the job. As we scan the room, assessing the height of the keep in the sigil above, we see both of the knights have vanished into the next room, forcing us to race after them, their reckless abandon for safety staying on brand with the knight's reputation. As we follow behind with multiple flights of stairs, all with the same outcome of the knights rushing ahead and us putting down Dramora, we find ourselves in the top level of the citadel. Its very walls resemble a gnarled molten rock, and as we head into the main chamber, we see flesh and sinew adorn a dome, and the treacherous spiked stairs do not even deter the knights for even a moment. As they rush past the summoned scamp towards the sigil, and find themselves face to face with the powerful Daedra in charge of guarding the keep. Once the threat is neutralized, Farwell, ever cocky and presumably unaware of how close he was to meeting death's sweet embrace, urges. The path is yours. Lead on. One of our rewards when searching one of the macabre containers that looks like a beating heart is actually pretty decent. Not just a staff of fireball, but also a Russell felt shirt of blade turning that resists normal weapons by 11% on self. 
which would be quite handy at, say, a red wedding. Not that we intend on going to Farwell's wedding. With all enemies somehow pacified, we head up the webbed stairs and find ourselves face to face with the sigil and the powerful orb staring back at us that once removed will shut down the Oblivion Gate. And this is also where the story can take three very distinct and different paths, which we will explore now as it gives you food for thought whether to spare or kill Farwell, as well as the rewards and consequences for each choice. The first choice being allowing Farwell to die. A quest and updates reading Farwell has been slain. I should take his signet ring from his body to the Count of Chaden Hall as proof of his son's demise. After slaying his attacker, we can then search Farwell's body. On it, we find a specialized Knights of the Thorn medallion, which gives us 10 speechcraft, Indaris' signet ring, and a full plate of steel armor. There was not enough to protect him from his inevitable doom. Also, near his body, we find his steel longsword and unique item Knights of the Thorn shield. Although it doesn't bear any special properties, it is etched with the Knight's logo. It should go without saying, but one of the benefits of allowing Farwell to be killed is that we're free to loot his body and wear his items guilt-free, save for Bremen's disapproving look. All this, and now Farwell is dead. Oblivion is truly cursed. Make sure you take his signet ring to bring to the Count. He would want proof. Consoling Bremen, we can say, we're sorry for your loss. Would you like to say any final words to Farwell before we depart? There isn't much more to say. You'll be missed. We'll have to inform the Count. If we get home, we should continue. For Farwell's sake. Taking the lead from the surviving knight, we pluck the sigil stone from atop its perch as the gate caves in all around us. Our quest and updates reading, After I touch the sigil stone, I appear outside of Oblivion and back on Tamriel. The gate has been destroyed, and I should report my actions to Aminus Gregori as soon as possible. Post the gate dissipating, Bremen standing next to us voices his relief. Ah, Chidenal. It's good to see its walls again. We then pause a moment and say, look, uh... Bremen, about Farwell, I'm... I'm sorry. It's a shame Farwell is gone. Although he was boastful and aloof, at least he treated me as an equal. I shall miss him. I understand, but if it's any condolence, at least that accursed Oblivion Gate is now destroyed. The gate has been closed. Finally, thanks to you, the Knights have a real victory on their hands. I never want to see one of those gates again. Idling just by the gate are the guards that are marveling at its destruction, and approaching them, they direct. Aminus can answer any questions you may have. He should be resting in the Knights of the Thorn Lodge over yonder. Taking their directive, we head back inside the Knights of the Thorn Lodge for a second time. Inside, we see that the lodge is empty and heading to the second floor, which acts as the barracks, we awaken the sleeping Aminus, who questions. You've done it! But what of Farwill? We then deliver the somber news saying, Look, uh, Farwell, he's been slain. Then it's a sad day in Chaden Hall. The knights were boastful louts, but they didn't deserve to be killed. I'll stay here and do a final sweep of the area. You're to report to the Count directly, as he wishes to speak with you. Breathing a sigh of relief, we can then ask Aminus a few questions and say, What will Chaden Hall do now without Farwell? Chaden Hall will mourn his loss. I can imagine he did have his supporters in the city, but what of the Knights of the Thorn Lodge I see have taken up residence? It's a shame so many of the Knights fell. I suppose their intentions were good, even if they were a bit self-serving. Well, we can't really argue there. And what about the Oblivion Gate and the remnants of the Daedra? It's a great relief that the gate is gone. Now the people of Chaden Hall can breathe easier. Count Indoris is waiting. I'm warning you. Get out or I'll call the guards. We're then prompted to leave the lodge as we are technically trespassing. It seems that Aminus has really made himself at home. 
Taking in the lodge for what seems to be a final time, we then speak to Bremen, who thanks. Thank you for getting me out of that cursed place. Tis a shame Farwell didn't make it. At least he died doing what he loved. You should hasten to Castle Chadenhall. We then leave the final noble knight of the Thorn and head to Castle Shadenhall to speak to the Count and relay the grim news. I'm pleased to finally meet the saviour of Chadenhall, and although the death of Farwell saddens me, I know you did the best you could. I realise he was trying at times, and he spoke before he thought, but he was still my son, and I adored him greatly. I'm sure he was difficult to travel with, and I respect your patience. Whereas others would have left him to die, I'm sure you fought at his side. Your actions are duly noted, and your reward will be in gold. Although the Count's spirits are high, all things considered, we still give our condolences, saying, I'm sorry for your loss, my lord. I thank you for your sympathy. You're truly a noble individual. Were you able to retrieve anything from him before Oblivion took him? At this point, as Count Andal had actually requested, we can give him the signet ring and say, Indeed, my lord, please take this ring. However, it should be noted, you don't actually have to have the ring for him to accept this. Thank you. You are truly worthy of all the praise being given to you. I salute you. I'll keep the ring as a reminder of... Hmm. On second thought, you keep it. You were the last to travel with him, and I feel you deserve it as a memento of your achievement. I won't take no for an answer. I want you to keep it. I thank you on behalf of all the citizens of Chadenhall. May R.K. guide you. And so, a reward for not saving Farwell happens to be his signet ring and leveled gold, this time 225 pieces, plus a single point of fame. The Count then imparts his final thoughts about his son. I'll miss him dearly. Don't feel upset. I know you did the best you could to bring him home. It is genuinely touching that he's so understanding given the circumstances. We then inform him of the fate of the remaining Knights of the Thorn. I'm saddened by the loss of those brave souls. May R.K. guide all of them to their final rest. Goodbye. Now this does conclude our first option of allowing Farwell to fall at the hands of a Daedra. But what happens if you decide to personally wipe out the Knights of the Thorn's leader and save the guard the headache and future generations under the petulant Farwell's potential rule. Well, just before we pluck the sigil from where it hovers, we spin on the two knights. By the gods, there is a... Letting Farwell in on a shocking revelation. Our quest then updates reading, Farwell has died by my hands. Count Indaris will be extremely upset that this has transpired. I fear I may have ruined the good deed this quest represented. A sentiment Bremen shares. Someone's been murdered! What's wrong with you? Farwell may have been a pain in the rear, but that was no reason to slay him! This is the final voice line that Bremen will impart to you as he's disgusted by your actions, and we've already earned ourselves plus two to infamy. For curiosity's sake, let's see what Farwell would say if Bremen oh, perished at our hands. What did you do that for? Lead on, to victory for the Knights of the Thorn. Oh, and you too, of course. The path is yours, lead on. Zero Farwell's given. Huzzah! If indeed Farwell had perished due to an unforeseen lightning strike, we are still free to loot his body unaccosted Save for Bremen's telling and, let's be honest, deserved scowl. Leaving Farwell's body in the plane, but not forgetting his shield, we then pluck the sigil stone from where it sits and his body disappears and we're swallowed once again by the Oblivion Gate as it collapses in on itself like the heart of a dying star. Outside the ruined gate, we're teleported to the outskirts of Shadenhall once more. This time, there are no guards awaiting our arrival. Notably, none of the guards are present, including Aminus, inside the lodge or otherwise. Apparently, they've been recalled by the Count. And we are left to face his fury, with Bremen tailing us, making sure that we make our way to Chadenhall Castle. Once inside the throne room, a baleful Count Indorus spits. You have some nerve addressing me after slaying my son. You're lucky I didn't have you executed on the spot. Now, get out of my sight. Utterly dismissed and not willing to push our luck, we can't help but think that 
there's got to be something more than just simple fortune that we were not executed for our crime. That is a thought we'll pursue after we explore the third and final option of saving Farwell from the Oblivion Gate and the related pros and cons for each action. Touching the Sigil Stone while the two knights survive, a familiar scene occurs and we reappear unharmed outside of Chaden Hall. A quest then updates reading. After I touched the Sigil Stone, I found myself outside of Oblivion and back on Tamriel. The gate is now nowhere to be found. I should now speak with Farwell for the first time. When the gate again finally disintegrates, Bremen then approaches us with more dialogue, exclaiming, Ah, Chadenhall. It's good to see its walls again. Well, it looks like the gate has been successfully closed. Couldn't have done it without you. The gate has been closed. Finally, thanks to you, the knights have a real victory on their hands. The first victory, right. Just quietly, do you think that Farwell's learned anything from this experience? Perhaps in the future, Farwell will learn patience and careful planning before dragging us into a situation like that again. I never want to see one of those gates again. So then we turn to Farwell, who begins his bragging anew, stating, We made it! Uh, I mean, victory is ours once again! Huzzah! You've done well. I wouldn't have expected such bravery from someone who isn't a Knight of the Thorn. Now that this battle between good and evil has been won, and the day is ours, you should go speak with my father. He will reward you greatly for escorting me home and closing the Oblivion Gate. Since you have led us to victory, I am hereby giving you the honorary title of a Knight of the Thorn. Your name shall be revered, and your deeds placed into song, to be performed by the greatest bards for generations to come. Congratulations. A quest then updates reading, Farwell thanked me in his odd way and told me to speak to his father, the Count of Chadenhall. I should do so. Also bestowed upon me the honor of being a Knight of the Thorn. To humor him, I courteously accepted. Huzzah! After a good moment of self-congratulating, Farwell is not done and goes in for a second round. No more will the gate threaten the good people of Chadenhall. The Knights of the Thorn have triumphed once more. We then pause to ask, what does it mean for us now that we are a Knight of the Thorn? As a Knight of the Thorn, you are now expected to carry this symbol of your knighthood. Carry it proudly and wear it well. We then gifted one of the Knights of the Thorn's necklaces, which, like its informally acquired counterpart, imparts us with plus ten to speechcraft. Farwell then takes his leave, warning, Make sure you address the Count properly. Farwell then saunters off to celebrate and we pause a moment to inspect our newly gifted Knights of the Thorn medallion. That does admittedly look better without the bloodstains after being plucked casually from Farwell's limp carcass. It's then we see the guards once more just on the hill and approaching them, they direct. Good work closing the Oblivion Gate. You've made my job much easier and safer. Thanks. If you're looking for Ominous, he's resting in the Knight's Lodge, over there. Taking their lead, we can then head back into the Knights of the Thorn Lodge. Once atop the second floor, a weary Ominous stirs from his slumber and greets. You've done it! I never thought it possible! I suppose Farwell will wish to talk to you now. Mustn't keep the Count's son waiting. Before we do speak to Farwell, it should be noted that Jared Strongblade, who we were introduced to briefly before, does not appear in the lodge without spawning him in. Thus, it breaks Farwell's speech, I believe he was meant to say, when he enters the lodge, returning from Oblivion and beginning his embellishments once more. Yes, the Oblivion Gate. No match for the Knights of the Thorn. When the foul portal cursed Chaden Hall with its presence, we bravely entered to do battle with the vermin within. We killed scores, nay, hundreds of evil Deidre. The ground ran thick with their dark blood. Then, with a mighty blow, I struck the very ground itself. My true strike sundered the magic of oblivion and destroyed the gate. Chaden Hall is safe once again, thanks to the Knights of the Thorn. Huzzah! Well met. The final remaining knight, Jared Strongblade, personally welcomes us to the Order. As the newest member of the Knights of the Thorn, I bid you welcome. Farewell. 
Trying to speak to Fawu one last time will have him chide us, saying, Why are you still here? You're supposed to go speak with my father. Make sure you address the Count properly. Taking our leave, we approach the Count on a much lighter note, and he happily greets. I'm pleased to finally meet the Savior of Chadenhall. I'm also overjoyed that you saved my son's life. I realize he's trying at times, and he speaks before he thinks. But he's still my son, and I adore him greatly. I'm sure he was difficult to travel with, and I respect your patience. Most would have given him up for dead, rather than deal with his ego. Anyway, I digress. I'm sure you wish to hear of your reward. I'm in possession of two fine weapons. They're both heirlooms of the Indaris family, held in the castle for several generations. I'd take great pleasure in bestowing one of them upon you. Please, choose the Thornblade or the Staff of Indaris. It's at this time we can choose... It's at this time we can choose one of two specific rewards. Choosing the Staff of Indaris, he says. The Staff of Indaris it is. Again, I thank you on behalf of all the citizens of Chadenhall, and I especially thank you as an elated father. Farewell, and may R.K. guide you. Examining the staff, we see it grants damage strength 7 points on target and shock damage 40 points on target. Plus, it has a very unique design that fits the aesthetic of Chadenhall, with the gnarled roots and custom leafy ornamentation. Plus, we're liked enough to be able to zap somebody in the hall without getting in trouble. Looks like you are in some trouble. Since we're friends, don't worry. I'll look the other way and take care of that fine for you. If instead we choose the thorn blade, Indorus says, The thorn blade it is. Again, I thank you on behalf of all the citizens of Chadenhall, and I especially thank you as an elated father. Farewell, and may R.K. guide you. The Thornblade is a leveled steel sword that grants Disintegrate Armor 60 points on strike, plus looking closer at the blade, it too is unique, lovingly crafted to show many thorns and a serrated edge, truly earning the name of Thornblade for their latest night. We're then free to ask the Count a few questions, such as, what do you think of Farwell's, uh, triumph? Even though he may be a bit misguided, I'm still proud to call him my son. And what about the knights that, uh, well, the remaining ones? I think if you had the chance to speak to any of the knights, they were happy to follow Farwell into battle. I'll be having a very long talk with my impetuous son. I don't blame him directly for their deaths, but he must learn to do things the proper way. He must realize he'll be ruling Chadenhall one day. That's a responsibility I aim to make him ready for. Goodbye. Saying our goodbyes and receiving plus two to fame. And it's probably best to leave on the note of the Count talking about his son leading Chadenhall one day. As this thought seamlessly segues into our final appraisal of as to why you should spare the Count's bumbling son. Speaking of which, if we approach Farwell after receiving our reward, he will say, Hello, Knight. I bid you welcome. I'm pleased that a Knight of the Thorn has received such a worthy gift, even if you're just an honorary Knight. There are no quests for you right now, Sir Knight. Don't fret, though. The Knights will rise to the occasion once again. Huzzah! Goodbye, Knight. Remember to carry our symbol proudly as a beacon of hope for all Cyrodiil. Outside of the easy argument of saving Farwell Net's superior items, gold, fame, and even membership to the Knights of the Thorn Lodge, my personal reasoning is that Inaris's own final words beg the ethical question that sparing Farwell is a net positive. See, Indara stated that he was grooming Farwell to rule, and ostensibly this seems like a bad fit as the Count is far more mature. However, speaking to the locals of Chadenhall, we learn of the true dark nature of the Count. Imperials hate Dark Elves. Dark Elves hate Imperials. Imperials hate that a no-name Lalu trader got made into a Count. Andal Indoris doesn't help his case by having a prat for a son and a wife that dies in very suspicious circumstances. So Indaris 
may indeed love his son, but that doesn't exclude him from the fact he's a stone-cold killer and net evil for the region, compounded by the fact that the Count openly allows the Dark Brotherhood's presence in the city, as seen in the loading screens. Plus, now that he's shed his pesky better half, he also visits Riverview to mingle with the unsavory Aurum gang, which are the local Skooma distributors, which I covered in a recent video linked at the end of this one where we track down the entire network. Furthermore, poor Farwell will wait outside of Riverview for the rest of the game once the quest is finished, almost listening in to his father's illicit activities. So I think a knight with a good heart that lacks maturity is far better than a more insidious and unhanded count, placed there thanks to Helseth and Berenzire and their cronies back in Morrowind. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, Traveller. We made it! Uh, I mean, victory is ours once again. Huzzah!